We are away. Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to what is now the fourth episode of the 12th Man podcast. Uh, I have got a slightly smaller audience today, but no less knowledgeable, uh, with a good mix of local teams, one very southern team, uh, who probably doesn't want to speak too much after the weekend. But a big welcome to Jax Edwards, our resident Burnley fan. Bailey Sagar, our unfortunate Blackburn fan. Uh, Ewan Vickery, our probably frustrated United fan. And Harrison, our uh, maybe uh, overachieving West Ham fan, shall we say. And not to forget Mr Marcus Briggs, who is bigging it up for the year nines and giving his slant, as well as Ewan, on the Manchester United situation. Uh, first things first, uh, there is only one place to kick off, and it is not the controversy at Stamford Bridge. It is because there are two football fans from the same uh, fixture that happened this weekend. So the early kickoff on Saturday at 12.30 at the Etihad Stadium, uh, Man City versus West Ham. My 30-second review before I bring in the expertise from the London Stadium is that West Ham played well. Uh, City were not at their absolutely flowing best. I think on another day, West Ham could have got and maybe deserved at least a draw. Uh, I think we just shaded it overall, although there was a little bit of a chance there in the last minute, which had uh, hearts in miles at the Etihad. But the 21, uh, 20 run um, winning run continues uh, with results the way they were for the rest of the weekend. It's looking nothing but a City title win at the moment. But credit where credit's due, I thought David Moyes' team put in a great display, uh, something you can be proud of, and are looking actually like a real serious contender with um, a third of the season still to go for a top four spot. Harrison, was you happy? Was you disappointed? Uh, was it a game you should have been winning or taking a point from, or were you just happy to play well? Well, I knew we weren't going to win because it's uh, they're like 12 points clear. They're not going to like, we're not going to beat them. They're on like a 91 streak. And and uh, our keeper was uh, gone for yeah. that match because yeah. he was Randolph, injured, I think. Yeah, Randolph came in instead of Fabianski. So. so I reckon if it was Fabianski on that first goal, I reckon Fabianski may have been able to save it because it was a header and he's pretty tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't think we were going to win. I'm surprised we got a goal and, and uh, we just played well. We played our best. You, you did. I like you say. I, I mean what I say there. I'm not just saying it because you're on you're on the phone uh, on the conversation today. Uh, I thought you were one of the better teams that have come towards this season. Um, I thought you played well in patches. You can see why you're a top four team in a minute, and I think it'd be interesting to see between yourselves, Chelsea, Liverpool. Um, Leicester probably falling in slightly if form continues into that into that mix for that top four spots to where it where it ends up and, and how the season plays out. Another team in the top four, uh, but dropping points again. I'll start with Ewan before I go to Marcus. Um, let's hang fire on the controversy. Let's take away the element that we're going to go on to on the second point. But was it was it two points dropped at Stamford Bridge? Is the title over? What's what's happening at Old Trafford, Ewan? Uh, well, the title's over. Beginning of the season, in my opinion, I never going into the season. I never won it. Well, I never expected us to win. Uh, we probably one or two. For, well, for the realist of the United fans, as you like to say, we all know that the title's not coming to Old Trafford anytime soon. Um, but I don't really think it's two points dropped. We didn't deserve the win, although we should have got the win, um, and it was probably the right, the fair result. I, 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 as more as this podcast comes on you and I wish that when I was growing up there was more people like you with a more balanced opinion for your age because I, I think you hit the nail on it every time you're brutally honest uh, to take away the controversy and, and the penalty discussion like I say that we will go on it wasn't a wonderful game of football yesterday I don't think it was it was two teams who were still figuring themselves out moving forward two teams who will be better next season for having either a new manager in Chelsea or Another season's experience under Ollie, but again, I, I appreciate your brutal honesty. Marcus, is there anything that you want to add on that? Do you think you were unlucky, or do you, do you agree with Ewan and think that a draw was probably agree, right? agree, agree with yeah. Ewan and that I think Man United should draft me in. Well, they tell you what, there's a controversial movement. Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer steps aside for Marcus Briggs. The famous Marcus Briggs comes in <laughs> and uh, and takes control of the first team. What would you bring, Marcus? You've got five seconds to sell yourself in an interview. What would you I bring? Can- I could bring all my spare capabilities to the team. I'm oh, good at keeping, I can play any position. I'm really good. Oh, you're going to just play a manager? Tell you what, there you go. United United drafted a player manager from Heinburn Academy in year nine, Marcus. We can all we can all dream big. I like it. Jack, I'm going to talk to you. 
Um, bad, bad afternoon in North London. Uh, I, did, I only saw the last 20 minutes of the game, but speaking to Mr Bradshaw and a few other Burnley fans, uh, I, I don't think you were ever really in the game. Uh, it could have put off and maybe should have at times got worse. What were your thoughts on the on the demolition job in North London? Um, we lost the game in the first minute when Bale scored. Yeah. The, the game was finished from there. I don't think there was any way of us getting back in. I turned it on in the first minute and we were already 1-0 down. You should have so. probably turned it off there and left it 1-0 and forgotten about it. So, yeah. tough afternoon. Listen, so, for me, Tottenham are not a team that's in form. The, the, goal, the goals were very good. Yeah, they were. And, you, you know, you've got to remember that they've got a top-class team, they've got a top-class manager, top-class stadium. It's just not quite work for them at the moment. Um, you are not on the greatest run of form, obviously, with the result against West Brom and the result against Fulham before it. Interesting game against the, uh, a non, another poorly or poor form team in Leicester this week, which we'll get on to later. But interesting to see how you go. But yeah, tough, tough I afternoon. Think as well, it helps with the other teams having a lot of money to spend. It does, it does and Is hopefully with new top, ownership. Tottenham, of how much have they spent on players? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you for sure, but what I will say is that well, over you spend like you spend like fifty million in the transfer window every season. Our team's worth forty million. I, listen, I agree. I think it's levels here. Then Bombalay was a huge signing uh, before him. Davison Sanchez was a huge signing. Gareth Bale's wages alone are probably more than Burnley spend on their entire transfer budget in a season. Let's just hope that your new. Uh, ownership system, which I know has had its own controversies, and he's up for. We'll make that as a debate maybe next week. But um, let's hope that they they put the money where their mouth is and 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 back Sean Dyche, who's done a great job at Burnley. Someone who had a worse weekend than even you, Jax, is probably Bailey Sagar, who's stuttering Blackburn Rovers team continue to pretend that they're an half decent Championship team uh, and keep keep throwing in dodgy results. Bailey, what you th- what your thoughts? Has he got to go? Has Mowbray got to go? Is that the solution? From when we've lost three matches in a row, I've always been from then, sack Mowbray. And can I just say, I was thinking on in the car this morning, um, and this is slightly controversial. I'm getting away from your game, but probably the less the less time spent on your game, the better. Uh, Gareth Ainsworth, who is the manager of Wickham, who I know are bottom of the championship, but took Wickham from the League Two up into the championship and used to working with small budgets, is a Blackburn Rovers fan. Uh, and I thought maybe that would be a good appointment, considering not necessarily now, maybe at the end of the season, as a way of trying to, to trying to reinvent the club and someone who's used to working on small budgets. Would you be happy with Gareth Ainsworth, or would you want someone more high profile? Um, um, I wouldn't mind having him, but we would probably be able to work and be um, like have someone maybe um, who's capable with some quite good teams. I'm not like. Um, exaggerating the Black Blackburn Rovers, uh, yeah. but we are a decent team. But it's our manager who's who's causing all these bad results. All right. Um. Well, in fact, it was a bit of a mess up last match. Um, against Coventry. Mm. Um, Kaminsky came out to um, like get the ball off the player, misses, ball goes over him into net. Is, is, that, is that a manager's fault, though, Bailey? Is that, sorry, just, is, that, is that the manager's fault or is it an individual error, do you think, if the keeper's making it? Was a, it, was a, it was an individual error in that match. We we should have won, I think. Is it, too, is it too many individual errors? Is that what it is, just quickly? Or is it, or is it are you still putting it all up firmly at uh, Tony Wobie's feet? It's a, bit of, it's a bit of both, to be honest. Like, some of our players are just messing up. But Mowbray is not exactly giving some of our better players more time. Like he's putting more of our older players out rather than like our younger players who are probably better than some of the older ones. Well, listen, it's it's something to keep an eye on. I think they probably will be changing not too distant future. So maybe Bailey will kick off with the Blackburn situation, and it may be that even by the time we we, we come together again next week, that there is a is possibly a new manager at the helm. But we we shall see. It remains to be seen. Uh, we'll talk more Blackburn later when we talk about the week, weekend's upcoming fixtures. Right, the, the standout point of the weekend here, uh, there is an issue or there's an incident at Stamford Bridge uh, where, by all accounts, in my opinion, certainly in the modern day, and certainly when you've got the technology, uh, it suggests handball. Whether you agree with whether it should be a handball or not uh, is another matter. However, the fact of the matter is that the ball's hit his hand. 
Uh, and obviously there is then a, a conversation that happens. Uh, there is rather angry Luke Shaw. There is a rather angry, uh, angry Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that's come after the game to suggest that the referee wanted to avoid controversy. So as a result, kind of took the easy way out. I've got to start with you. In is it was it a penalty? And is it a, and and have they have they messed it up there? Have they completely screwed it up? Have they made themselves look a fool? Or is it just one of those things in football now? Well, uh, I think there's no escaping it from the ref, really. Um, and to be honest, Luke Shaw and Ollie aren't going to say that if it's not true. And there's been quite a few stories today of Harry Maguire coming out and saying that Luke Shaw must have misheard him um, and that conversation didn't happen. But no, I disagree with that. In all honesty, I think Man- Manchester United as a club and Harry Maguire as captain have come out to save the ref's career, honestly. Because I think, as far as, far as I know... You can't replay a Premier League game for an error like that or you can't give a goal or anything like that. Um, so there's nothing we could have ch- changed about that once the decision was made. So I think Manchester United and Harry Maguire have come out and said that just to save the ref's career, in all honesty. I think um, I think you make a good point because there's obviously a huge PR team around United, around the FA, uh, around um, the, the the, the officials and the, and the team that look after the officials, it, it would be it would be a massive massive error if they came out and said, you know, this has been said, this has been done, we've not acted in this way. It, it called the AR into question once again and again. I, I look on Twitter this weekend and it was an example in the Australian Super League, um, in the football down down in Australia, where it's very very clear as to what the process is because you can hear the referee, you can hear the players, you can hear the process, you can hear the linesman. You know, you can make a decision quickly and the fans can be involved and they can hear it quickly and it takes away all of this rubbish. If the referee was mic'd up, we would have heard him or not heard him say what he either did or didn't say to the player. It would have been crystal clear and it would have been on television. So why can't we give a microphone to these referees so that we can understand the process, get involved in the process and, and, and clearly understand how the referee who is just a human and he's going to make errors can use the technology and people around him to make an accurate call because as you said take away the confusion and everything else that comes with it the he said she said this kind of situation it was a handball wasn't it which means it's a penalty like it a lump it it's a penalty and it could have changed the game it could have brought united back within 10 uh it could have kept you know, Chelsea a bit further down the table. You know, Harrison, you were probably looking at that game thinking you wanted Chelsea to drop points in that race for the top four. It, it opens it all up again. Marcus, have you got anything you want to say as a United fan? Are you, are you agreeing with you? And It was a clearly, you could see it on the VAR, it was a clearly a perfect handball. Well, it, it, it was it was a definite. I don't, it, certainly, I don't think it was deliberate. I don't, you know, it was, it was, it is what it is. Yeah, the ball- where the camera angle, at, where they had it on TV, you could clearly see it hit his yeah. hand. And again, should should he have gone over? Should he, you know, should he have looked? Should he have used it? Should he have been yeah. using the technology around him? And I think and the ref made a stupid decision, and he should have had another look. Look at yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Over- overwhelmingly, yes. And I think, um, I think the people on this this podcast suggest the same. If the technology is there and it's used correctly, VAR is no problem for me. The problem is, is that we are yeah. now two two years into this, and I'm still struggling, still struggling with it all. Um, anyone else want to add anything? Yeah. Can I just mention something about VAR? Well, it is absolutely ruining the game. Um, in the Brighton match recently, with that free kick, that it just it ruined the match for. Yeah. But yeah, but, but the the goal wouldn't have been given anyway. But yeah, because of course the keeper and the wall were not ready. Well, it's the, no, the ref blew his whistle twice. Yeah. I think... Um, it I, a, and it caused a bunch of confusion. It was the ref's stupidity, actually, to be honest. I think I think it was. It goes back to the point we were making last week as well. I think most people are in favour of this as long as it's used right, and it's just not. It isn't It isn't used correctly. I think you were going to say something, Ewan, before the lads were talking. Have you got something you wanted to chuck in there just before we finish on this point? Yeah, and even irrelevant of the fact whether the ref... Uh, sports Aaron Maguire and said that it should be a penalty. Um, as far as I know, the rules of VAR is that the the other the official that's running it looks at the issue, decides whether he thinks it's a penalty or not, 
and then speaks to the ref. And in, we've seen loads of cases of where VAR have said, no, you don't need to look at it. It's not a pen. But he's, had, he's been instructed to go to the monitor, which um, shows us that the, the, the official on VAR thinks there's something there. So I think when the, when the official gets told to go to the monitor, it should be given as a penalty in that situation. I, th- I, th- I think you're right. And this, you know, the, the, the going to the monitor is a good thing because it takes away the responsibility from the VAR and from Stockley Park and it puts it back onto the, the actual official. You may have made a mistake, which is okay. Have a look. Have a look from angle one, two, three, four, twenty, whatever you need to do, and make a sensible decision. And and again, it's just not happening. And on the rare occasion they are going to use the monitor, it's almost like a token gesture to say by the referees, oh, look, we do use the technology that's here. It's not actually making the game any better. It's just like rubber stamping the decision. So I, I agree, it's a problem. Uh, the referees haven't got it right. The FA haven't got it right, and it's and it's something that needs addressing going forward. Were you going to say something, Harrison, or did you just have your restriction? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I was just about to say the it was clearly pen. It literally he put his hand up, so it wasn't. You may have said it was an accidental penalty, but accidental handball. But it couldn't have been because he fully put his hand up and it bounced off the United player's shoulder, which is allowed. Um, yeah. yeah. For me, for me, we do use the VAR screen, but we just look at it for like ten seconds, and then they go away and make the decision yeah. on just what they want. I agree, and, and, and I think what referees have got to get away, get away from is realizing that it is okay to just put your hands up sometimes and say you got it wrong. We all have to do it. We don't like it. You know, we all have to do it. Jack, you start talking in the middle of a lesson, you get called out. You can't deny it. You know, you were you were yapping to your mate in the middle of a lesson. You got to stick your hands up sometimes and go, "I was wrong," uh, and we have to do it as adults. Uh, you have to do it as children. You have to do it at school, whatever you may do. Sometimes you just got to admit you're wrong. Okay, right. Moving on, I put a slightly contra- controversial issue, and not something that we all, myself included, will have a particular knowledge on. But I just wanted to test the water. Uh, I didn't know if you were aware, but it turns out at the start, talking to some of the guys that they were, uh, that below the national league or sort of conference, effectively in this country. Um, any kind of semi-professional team below that level, the season has been cancelled or was cancelled several weeks ago. That was obviously before the government announcement that suggested that restrictions were going to ease. Uh, there is a campaign gathering pace on Twitter at the moment, so fans say play, uh, hashtag let us play, where fans have, certainly for me, in my local area where I live, so Filed FC uh, near Blackpool, who were in that National League North and were second in National League North when the league was cancelled, are asking for the right to earn the promotion back to the National League. Uh, just a quick a quick one from all of you, because again, I'm conscious of time. Is that right? Is that right? And I'll start with I'll start with Jax. Is it right to be able to just call off a season in, in February, as when it was, or should they have put every kind of measure in place to try and finish the season instead of making it null and void? Um, For me, it depends. Like, I think, like, the... Some of the, like, it should have been, like, see, some of the leagues should have been allowed to play, like, the just the one below, below League Two. Because mm. you get some, like, good teams that have been relegated from League Two uh, and around there. Yeah. And you get, that's where sometimes, like, League One players, like, League One teams look at for their players. So if they can't, they don't know what the players are like, then how how is that gonna? Yeah, and he, listen, you've got. I think you've got to draw a line somewhere. I just think. I just think it was a premature. Personally, I think it was a premature move, and I think that there is a desire for it to continue. It could have continued safely. If we're talking about having junior football back in a few weeks' time, then why can't we have uh, semi-professional teams who are investing a lot of money uh, and whose futures are riding on this? So if if file don't go up there's a financial implication to that, to that non-promotion, for instance. They've got to spend another year in that league. That's another year that's gone by where they've had no fans attending games over the last 12 months. There is there is an issue. The point I wanted to make, and I just want a quick, a quick show of hands and then I'll let anyone else come back in with their thoughts, is for me, and I'll be the first to volunteer, I'm better as a person when football is there, it's happening, and I'm there and involved in it. It's good for me as a person. It's the release that I like at the weekend. It's something that I look forward to. It's something that's different from my wife, from my kids, from my friends that are not into football, from the music that I like. It's an experience that I've had, fortunately, for the you know over 30 years in my life. Uh, and as a match-going fan I've had for the last 25 years, 
I love going to watch the game. I love paying my season ticket. I love meeting my friends and my dad there and having a couple of drinks and, and loving it. So for me, I can understand people's frustrations. Just put your hand up and I can see I can't see Marcus, but I can see the other four. Hands up if, if this is if you think that football is good for you as a person. As in it makes you the person that you are. And I think that is the whole reason why we're on this kind of conversation, is because we enjoy it to the point where we want to give up our time and we want to give up our energy to talk about it and to have a to have a chat and to, to state some opinions and 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 to, to get things out of there. That's that's why we do it. Has anyone else got anything you want to add there that he, you know that, that cements that feeling towards football? Harrison, is that your hand still up? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just saying like about like them, you know, going down and getting like shut down and that. I reckon if you get paid for playing football, you should play football. You shouldn't be stop because it's like just stopping jobs. Yeah, I, because I, that I, might be like something that they need in life to like make get through the stuff. Well, that's it. It's, it. There is a financial risk to this as well. I think the players would probably prefer to play, but if you cancel a season. That, and the players missing out. And the players are missing out on bonuses, for instance, that would have otherwise been paid. Potential sponsorships moving forward. Uh, Jack, you made a good point that the, the League One and League Two teams are going to start looking at the divisions below them. The National League, the National League North, the National League South. The time Cherry picks some of the best players. It, it has this huge snowball effect because now, if it stays as it is, that their season again, so the, the 2021-22 season, isn't going to start until August. Well, we're, we're only the first day of March. It's a long time for those people to be out of the game, for the fans to be out of the game, lost the revenue and everything. So I just I wanted to throw that in there and I, and I appreciate you, you being sensible about that because I think a lot of people, it's quite easy to forget when we're only looking in our team's cases at Premiership and Championship, it's easy to forget the small guys. Harrison? Uh, well, I actually, my uncle's actually uh, some professional footballer. Is he? Who does he play yeah. for? Uh, you know? He plays for, uh, I think it's Rams Bottom, okay. Rams Bottom United. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, and he gets paid quite a bit. He only has like one little side job. Yeah. So like, and that's not going to be enough for him to work. Yeah. You know, it's, like. it's people's livelihoods and it's meals on tables at this level. It is. You know, we're not we're not all you know fortunate to be on the on the kind of money that some of the guys at City United, even Burnley in that respect, West Ham are going to be on. Uh, and some people rely on that as their as their main income. So. It's it's a big impact, but we'll we'll see. Let's let's see if they manage. My, to nephew, get the my nephew could have played for West Ham in that. Well, I tell you what, that would have made this conversation uh, a bit different, wouldn't it? If you'd have got your nephew on and uh, uh, and started having a conversation. He, he lives down south. Maybe maybe you can join us on another show in the future, eh, Jax, If we get in touch mm. with him in, in enough time. Right, last last little feature. So. Uh, Bailey, I'm, I'm not rubbing it in, I promise. I did say to you at the start, and I was only winding you up. For everyone who is not a championship supporting team, it is a double game week in the Premier League this week. Um, I will kick off with mine. Uh, City have got two games starting tomorrow. Um, uh, I would suggest still a must-win game. One to keep the run going and one to keep the distance. Tough game against Wolves at home. Wolves' this form is indifferent. Uh, City's form is impressive. I'm going to go for a 3 0 home win for City tomorrow uh, and to keep the run going. And then for me, the title decider, and I say this hand on heart, I still think United are just in the title race. I, I don't think Leicester are because the form is, isn't great. I know United isn't much better, but we've got to play United, but we've got to play Leicester as well in about a month's time. Uh, however, I think if we beat United, uh, like I expect us to, and the gap widens to 15 points, then that is way too much for any team to overhaul. So I'm going to go for uh, City 2, United 0 uh, at home to the uh, Reds from down the road on Sunday. The run continues, uh, and I'm happy as a pig in you-know-what come the end of the weekend, OK? We'll move on to Marcus. United, which the one second you've got. Uh, is it Crystal Palace away in the week, followed by City away? On Sunday, what are your thoughts with Crystal Palace at followed by City? Crystal Palace, probably 2-0. OK, 2-0 United against Crystal Palace. And what about the derby? City, get 3-2. 3-2 City, OK, so we're 2-2. Oh, two two. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I think you've been. You must have been drinking. Like, I only beat you three times. Remember that time where we beat you three times? I, 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 listen, your record at our place recently uh, is much better than ours. We've not had a. We're not a particularly favourable results. I just think if you think about the stage of the season we're at, then we we should rightly so be favourites. But Marcus, this show is about opinions, and you've given your opinion. You would give me give me the real give me the right reasons. Give me the right score. <laughs> 2-1 to us versus Crystal Palace and um, I'm going to go 2-0 City. Two one, 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 no, two words, Ruben Diaz. Two words, Ruben Diaz, the rock that is. If I'm being honest though, what I will say is it's a must-not-lose game for City. City draw, this point stay at 12 with United. I still think it's very, very difficult from that position. Then City two words, four or five. If two words, your fantasy team. I tell you I've what. Got what Diaz we'll, and Stones. What, well, what we'll do is because I do play fantasy football and I'm in about a million different That's leagues. Nice. Um, is that we'll talk. We'll we'll talk fantasy football next week. I, I, it wasn't a feature I'd so far included, but we will do. So, Jack Edwards, forget your fantasy team in a minute. Your team's struggling a bit in the league and teams are picking up points behind him. You have got Leicester at home in the week, uh, and then you have got Arsenal at home. At the weekend, two top eight, top nine teams at your place. Are you going to take any points, or is it, or is it a bad run of form that continues? For me, I, I think Leicester aren't playing the greatest at the minute. I think we might maybe get a, a shock result. Maybe I think two on to us. Okay, Jacksy boy puts his. Uh, I think, I think da- Dash will be um, Dash will be mad at them with their run of form. Yeah. So so he'll um he'll have um. Adam in training, doing all sorts. Okay. And I think we might get a point out of Arsenal's game. Superb. So I'm another, a one-one draw. Another inconsistent team there who look good one week and then they look distinctly average the other. So well done, Bailey. I'm going to come to you. Your hand was up as well. Your games. Do you want me to go? With you? You've not got a game in midweek, as far as I'm aware. You've got Millwall at home on Saturday. We've, um, I think we've got um, a match on TV tomorrow. Yeah, you've oh, yeah. got Reading. Yeah, Reading tomorrow. Reading tomorrow. Well, bonus result. Well done, Bailey. So stick it down. So you've got Reading versus Blackburn. Is it a Reading, Bailey? Yeah, day in Reading. OK, so Reading are a form team, top six of the championship versus an in-form, or an out-of-form, sorry, uh, Blackburn team. What's the result at Reading followed by the result at home to Millwall? I reckon it's going to be 3-0 to Reading... And possibly maybe <laughs> one or maybe two one to us at, at Millwall. I, I put I, on, you, on my predictions on the Super Six. I think it's a Super Six game. Blackburn Millwall. I've put it down for a draw. Uh, Millwall looking at it and draw far too many games, and, and Blackburn with a poor form. So you're going for one point from six. The best it's going to be though is three points at home to Millwall. Okay, Harrison. Yeah. Double yeah, game week for you. Um, Who's exactly. West Ham got? I did. I've, I've, uh, I've written it down, but I can't find uh, it. Who's West Ham got? We actually don't have a match this week. We have uh, next week is our double uh, match week. Uh, we have Leeds on the eighth, and then yeah. uh, we have United on the fourteenth. And I reckon we're going to beat Leeds maybe three one, two one. Is that is that your place? The Leeds game, Harrison? Um, it might be. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So you're going to beat Leeds, and what about when you play? Uh, well, like, dirty Reds. Well, I reckon it'll be a two-two draw. Two-two draw. Okay. okay. So f- the four points, four points to West Ham in the not too distant future to help cement their um, to help cement their overall top four aspirations. Okay, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. You've been sensible, great with your opinions as always. Uh, the video will go out over the next couple of days. Now, you know, I really appreciate your contributions. Uh, like I say, we will we'll discuss fantasy football. At some stage later in the future, uh, we'll obviously review the action from from this week uh, on next week's episode, and we'll hopefully, uh, I say hopefully, I hope it's none of our teams, but maybe there's a bit of controversy that keeps us talking and, and keeps things uh, up to date, yeah. and and we can uh, we can have a discussion about that. Okay, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Left on this, it says it says that we've got until four o'clock. Yeah, we we did. I just put it there just in case it overran. So we'll uh, we'll finish it there. Stay online, please, as always. I'm just going to finish off recording. Uh, we'll take you from there. Just stay there in the background, please. Um.